had the opportunity to work in some interesting places in the world in my 20 years in public health. Zimbabwe, Liberia, Uzbekistan, Yemen, and I've learned to expect the unexpected. But there are some things that are even more surprising than one thinks. I started working in Afghanistan back in 2002. And we were working on midwifery education and rebuilding maternal and newborn health. And we worked in a number of midwifery schools around the country. But after being there for more than two years, there was still one midwifery school in the south, in Host province, that I hadn't been able to get to. And I was telling my colleague Jim at USAID that I really wanted to get down to Host. And he said, well, I need to get down there too. I can requisition the USAID plane. We can book a trip. We'll go down in a couple weeks. Fantastic. So a couple weeks goes by. We meet at the airport. We get on the plane. It's a small plane, four-seater, two seats facing front, two seats facing back. There's four of us on the plane talking as we're flying down to Host and chatting about what we're going to do and what we have to accomplish while we're there. Well, nobody really told me that when you're flying into a troubled area, you can't just land the plane. You have to do the spiral landing to not be a target as you're flying in. So we start the spiral landing, no problem. And I'm looking at the guy who's sitting in front of me. He looks OK, but then he gets this look on his face. He panic. And I look over my shoulder, past the pilot and through the windshield. We're heading straight for the ground. And just before we get there, the pilot pulls back. We land the plane, no problem. We actually landed at a military base. That's where we were going to stay for the few days that we were there. We were milling around outside, uh, inside the base. Uh, I met a couple medics, some nurses, a doctor who had come down from Bagram Airfield that day. That's interesting. What are, I wonder what they're doing here. And all of a sudden, the commanding officer comes over. Excuse me, everybody is going on Operation Band-Aid. Please come into the briefing room. Uh, Dr. Smith, would you just come over here to the briefing room? <laughs> so we go into this briefing room, big map on the wall, chairs in a circle around here. Ladies and gentlemen, remember everything in this room is code word classified. Uh, Dr. Smith, just don't say anything. Anymore. <laughs> so he points to the map and he says, ladies and gentlemen, we're here in host and Oh, 1,500 hours, we're going to be moving out, we're going down here. He points to the edge of the map, practically on the Pakistani border, and I'm thinking, what in God's name have I gotten myself into? Why are these medics and doctors all here? What? And I look over at my colleague Jim, and he's just kind of looking up in the air, <laughs> avoiding my gl They planned a forward clinic that I knew nothing about, that I'd gotten signed up for. So we go back outside. <clears throat> Now there's a big convoy of vehicles, trucks with supplies, armored personnel carriers, Humvees, and they start handing out the bulletproof vest, the, ar the body armor. And they get to me, oh, sorry, Dr. Smith, you official personnel only. You, you understand. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so we get into the Humvee, start the long drive. And, you know, Humvees are not particularly built for enjoying the scenery, so it was kind of boring. We arrive at this place, and we start setting up a clinic in this schoolhouse. Well, we go to sleep for the night, we get up in the morning, and the next day and that day, we saw 700 patients in one day. Well, I got put on, of course, the men's side of the clinic. I'm a gynecologist. <laughs> I, I haven't seen a male patient in 10 years. <laughs> but we saw, we saw little kids who had worms who needed deworming medicine, guys who had sores on their arm because they didn't clean their wounds properly, and lots of weakness. Weakness, which we found out was just code for, I want to get in there and see what's going on in there. <laughs> And luckily, every now and then, the nurses would come from the female side to ask me a question. The gynecologist in me was liberated for a moment. <laughs> so we finish up the clinic, <clears throat> head back into town, because I still hadn't done what I had gone there for. I wanted to see the midwifery school. So the next day, I wake up, and I get dressed in my <clears throat> traditional Afghan uh, clothes, shower kameez, and I've got my topi on, and think I'm going to head into town. No. 
the Humvee, still no body armor. <laughs> I head into town and they drop me off by the hospital and I spend a wonderful day talking to the teachers and the midwives and the students and learning what they're doing. I saw in that one day that the amount of care that I gave the day before was nothing compared to the service that they would give every day for the rest of their lives. And like a lot of opportunities in public health, we get more than we give, we learn more than we teach. So we finally, you know, we're wrapping up the day and my phone rings. It's like, hey Jim, Jeffrey, where are you? I'm, I'm still in the midwifery school, like I said. Okay, stay there, we're coming for you. Like, uh, okay, fine. So they come up, I get back in the Humvee, head back to the base, and just as we cross the gate into the base, he turns to me and he said, <clears throat> They've been monitoring, monitoring the, um, some insurgents in the area, and there was some increased radio chatter today about the foreigner in town. So we decided we would come get you before somebody else came to pick you up. So I did what I went there for. I got to see the Midwood Free School. I got to talk to the incredible midwives and learn what they were doing and understand their incredible progress. And I learned, I learned once again that day that the unexpected can be more unexpected than we expect, even when they don't give you the body armor. <laughs>